So, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, Gregorio here reporting for duty. Uh, flying solo this morning and um, as promised, um, for those of you that saw it, um, a few weeks ago, Chopsy and I did a new bike reveal, uh, my new personal bike reveal, uh, which was, <laughs> having watched it back, it was a bit of a ramble fest on my part, but I think I was just a little bit overexcited and wasn't quite in the right headspace to do a video, to be honest. But anyway, the comments have been really good and there's been loads of people obviously pleased with the choice and complimentary, which is fantastic. What I promised to do um, was to basically do a little bit of onboard, just to sort of sort of explain and describe how I'm feeling with the new bike and how I'm getting on with it. So that's what we're doing this morning. So if that is of interest, my kind of first month thoughts of owning a, an Aprilia Tuono V4 factory, then uh, please stick around and enjoy the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. And if it's okay with you, Chopsy, we'll roll the intro. Right, so here we are, wandering over to the Italian flat bar, sort of, kind of, super naked. Not really, everyone complains that it's not a super naked. It's not really a super naked, is it? It's basically an RSV4 with flat bars and slightly less power, because um, it's got a slightly smaller engine than the RSV4 now, 1077 versus 1100, but they're pretty much similar. Um, so anyway, I will climb aboard and uh, go for a little ride. It's just incredible, really. So here we are. So this is in the Ultra Gold. For those of you who didn't see the, uh, the the reveal, so this is a new colour for 2024. Um, I wasn't actually taken by the colour uh, when I'd seen pictures of it previously. It was only when I stumbled across uh, an Aprilia dealer that had one in the showroom and I saw it in the flesh. So I thought, oh my god, actually, I really like that. It's not too OTT, but it's bling enough for me. And uh, so I decided to actually uh, order one in this colour. Uh, not from the particular shop that I saw it in, but from somewhere else. Uh, but anyway, enough of all that. Let's get going. So for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you'd have seen that I've now done 1,048 miles. So I've done the first service, or had the first service done. Um, actually, officially, according to the manufacturer, they need 1,200 miles, so it's 1,500 kilometers for a full run-in. Obviously, I'm relaxing a lot more now, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going mad with it. I like, I'm a bit, I'm too ridiculous with my bikes, to be honest. I like to make sure that they're done completely in line with uh, the recommendations. But what's the bike like so far? Uh, bit of a spoiler alert, but I'm really loving it. I f love it so much. It's, it's just like the perfect bike for me. You know, it's not perfect. It's perfect for me, but it's not perfect. So I will talk about some of the things that you might want to consider if you are considering getting one. Uh, it's close to perfect, but I think what you realize or what I've realized, and I knew this before, is this is not a naked or flat bar uh, bike that's been built from the ground up to be that. This is obviously an RSV4 of old and wisely Aprilia decided to essentially put flat bars on it so the whole thing is designed you know to be very powerful very fast and in some ways I suppose a little bit unforgiving and so some of the things that you have to sort of put up with if you will and put up with is probably too negative a phrase but um, I don't use the quick shifter for instance riding around town riding slowly it just it just doesn't it doesn't like it the quick shifter and blipper is amazing on this bike but you really need to be you know on the power to get the best out of the quick shifter and then it becomes one of the best that i've ever experienced for the from a blipper perspective that's completely different that is probably the best it's probably the best blipper that i've ever used and you know i use that constantly at all speeds the whole time and it's flawless so yes, yeah, so, and, and you know, I think when you're riding at real kind of slow speed, you know, you know that the engine is a race bike engine and you know, it's not 100% kind of happy if you're going really, really slow. And, and again, it's really kind of easy 
to ride around that and you know you'll see me using the clutch but I think just to kind of leave it there that is the end of any negative feedback that you're going to get from me today on this bike and, it, and it's not really that negative because it's so easy to just you know work around that you know and 99.9% .9 of people that buy a bike like this have probably been riding for quite a while and most of them have been riding way longer than it was we all had blippers and quick shifters anyway so it's, it's nothing really and you soon sort of just get back into it no problem at all on the positive side oh my god the list is long so where do i start so first of all i'll start with just sort of the handling and the suspension setup the chassis the way that the bike feels and it is really 10 out of 10 it's brilliant absolutely brilliant um, i think unlike some of its competitors and i don't know why it's more comfortable um, riding around on the roads. So the feedback is fantastic. You know exactly what's going on. The handling's amazing. I've got this in the sort of like medium setup from an uh, electronic suspension point of view. Uh, and it's really, really comfortable. There's no jarring. You don't get anything through the spine. In terms of the how upright it is, I mean, compared to a sports bike, I find this to be totally comfortable. This is probably the perfect balance uh, if you're too upright I find you get too much through the spine and also I find you just end up like acting as a parachute uh, whereas this is you know slightly canted forward um, so you don't have that parachute effect but it's nothing like a sports bike and so it's you know I find it very comfortable and also the seat on this bike is well padded wide you can move around just kind of moving on to the other good points the brakes it's got M50s at the front and single uh, caliper at the back, Brembo, and yeah, the brakes. The brakes are lovely. I mean, they're not, the feel is not quite the same as the BMW M1000R that uh, I tested uh, about a month or so ago, but they're still fantastic. And again, being realistic on the road, you know, the feel is lovely, they're very progressive, and yeah, no complaints at all. Uh, the other thing, of course, about this bike is the engine which uh, this is the first time i must I, I don't know how many bikes i've had in my life it's a ridiculous amount of bikes um as chops will confirm but this is the first time i've ever had a v4 um, and i really do think this is probably my favorite engine ever it's it's so engaging the noise the character of it's lovely the torque the pickup it's just so enjoyable and you know it, it just yeah it just makes you sort of feel good the whole time you're riding it like nothing else really and the other thing about it that i really like which i know sounds a bit sort of boring really but when you're just sort of cruising at a constant speed say you've got a little bit of a motorway jaunt to do you know there's no vibes at all through the bike no buzzy buzziness that you get on a straight four and so it's really 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 good so yeah as you can tell <laughs> Um, I'm rather liking it. I know it's sort of a weird thing, hard to quantify, but it's just sort of the feeling that you get on this bike. It's like it's like nothing else. And I found it on the RSV4 too, and I've, I've tested and ridden those. There's just something that you, you can't quite quantify, but it's just so enjoyable. And it's, yeah, pretty fabulous, to be honest. So I am very much in love. As I say, it's, you know, it's not 100% perfect, but it's perfect for me. I mean, just listen to the thing. I don't know how well the sound's coming out, but oh my God, it's unbelievable. You know, and I, I feel, I mean, I like all bikes. There's not many bikes that I don't like, so just put that out there. But I think where this is nicer than, say, the Ducati Street Fighter V4 is the sound. You know, I feel that the Ducati V4, you know, it's, it's a great bike and it's obviously super, super fast and, there's nothing wrong with it at all and it does have some advantages over this but it does not sound like this Aprilia this is just like nothing else so yeah so she sounds very very nice she feels very nice she looks very nice and yeah it's just one of those bikes that just makes me feel uh, makes me feel really good and I I really do love it and you'll see there I mean the pickup is just absolutely Delicious. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, I mean, 
I just don't see how you could have any more fun. So then you'll see there, obviously the quick shifter, absolutely perfection. But you've just got to be riding the thing, which is fair enough. I mean, it's derived from a race bike. You know, they're not riding it around 20 miles an hour and they're developing that. And what a thing. So yeah, it's just like an event really. I mean, I've only ever driven in the car world a Ferrari once, lucky enough to ride one, uh, ride one, drive one. Uh, this is a long time ago. And um, I wasn't a massive, you know, I like Ferraris, but I was, you know, they weren't really that much of a big deal to me. And I drove one and again, it was just, I wasn't expecting it to be so much of an event, the noise, the feeling, and it was amazing. And I've kind of loved them ever since. This is the same, really, I think, in the bike terms. The gravelly there. It's just so much fun. You know, and the handling is just beautiful. It's so stable. You know, it's not the lightest of all the bikes. Um, but once you get dialed into it, it is just incredible and it feels so so planted and it's absolutely lovely and i think that's the thing that you have to sort of remember really stuff on paper you've got to go and ride these things you can't make the decision based on what's on paper and oh my god listen to the thing So yeah, just another thing to mention, which is a consideration. And it does, you know, if you look at comments on videos that get posted on the Tuona and the RSV4 is just around fuel consumption. So this bike, I believe has got an 18 litre tank. So it's pretty decent size. Um, I mean, it is quite thirsty. Uh, you know, this sort of V4 gloriousness comes at a cost and that cost is, it is quite thirsty. Now, last year, I went to the Isle of Man with Alex, who um, has got a Tuono, and I was on my Suzuki GSX-R, which obviously is a thousand four cylinder straight four. And to be honest, we were doing, we were doing fill ups in parallel together. Uh, a lot of miles getting up there, motorway jaunt and then obviously when we're at the island you know doing going across the mountain and playing around the island all day every day and I think he was burning probably probably about an extra litre litre and a half tops every time we filled up to me on the GSX-R which is nothing really in my mind it's negligible so I think when you're riding a litre sports bike of any kind if you're riding them fairly hard obviously their consumption goes down so this is thirstier but I don't think it's I don't think it's bad enough to, to warrant worrying about it. But having said that, um, I'm getting probably about 110 miles from completely brimmed to when the fuel warning light comes on. It's got a fuel gauge now, but when the actual fuel light comes on, it's about 110 miles. I think there's about four liters on reserve, so I guess that's when the light comes on. So you've probably got about 30 odd miles before you're really going to run out of fuel. So I've, I've not pushed it. I'm sure I could probably get about 130 miles if you really wanted to push it. But you know, I'm, I want to run out, so I'm going to fill up. So I'm saying about 110 miles, which is amazing. I'm not going to pretend it is, but uh, just a consideration. Uh, it's certainly up there with the first year bikes. And that's definitely true. But I promise you, when you're riding it round on country roads, the last thing you're worrying about is that I couldn't care less. The noise. <laughs> Bloody lovely. Oh. Get in there. Yeah, 
yeah for a road bike honestly it's like it's all you need and more you're probably relieved that I've stopped talking <laughs> a ramble fest from Gregorio but no, I thought I'd put a video up don't want to keep it too long I will just do a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a pullover and I'll just show you some of the electronics or well, the customizable electronics on the dash now when you go for a test ride on a bike and again I don't want to patronize everybody but sometimes they have all the electronics up in a really strange way the suspension set up weirdly the throttle you know and I've ridden a bike and thought, oh god I just couldn't live with this it's just too much or it's you know just too aggressive or too flat too soft spend a moment get a decent test ride make sure you've got enough time try and do a bit of research on how you change things before you go for it it's all available online people have made videos and set it up to how you want to ride it and how you want to like it because you'll probably find it transforms the bike and a bike that you may not have liked you end up thinking oh my god it's amazing so anyway i'll just pull over here so i don't know how well this will come out but let's just turn the ignition on so basically you've got i'm in user mode so it's like tabs basically on the screen so if i just hold down uh, the button here it takes you into sort of configuration mode and it's all really nice and straightforward so you've got user tour and sport so in tour and sport uh, the only thing is i think you can change the traction control and the suspension firmness not by changing it in here but by actually changing it when you're in just the normal dashboard dashboard mode and you can change it using these buttons but here you'll see in user mode these are all customizable so you've got engine sorry aprilia engine map aem then you've got engine braking so how aggressive you want that um, traction control then we've got wheelie control uh, then launch control um, obviously you don't ask for track use really but it's there anyway then you've got ABS setting and then you've got the automatic active suspension so it's a Prilia suspension control and we're in A2 so you can obviously change it to your liking but if I go back out of there and then go into the menu here you can then go into the Aprilia suspension control so you'll see that for user mode I was in active A2 active sport and if you go in there basically you can set all the front firmness rear firmness brake support and then damper so it's got an electronic steering damper as well and you can obviously kind of change how you want that so if you go into A3 then you'll see that's the softest mode so things the firmness have been wound back and then again if you go into active track or in fact that i haven't changed that that's the same as the a2 but then i'd probably firm that up if it was on track and then of course if you don't want it in active mode at all so you just want to set it up in the way that you want then you can go into um, m1 which basically would be a non semi-active mode and just set it up accordingly and then you assign whichever suspension setup you want again if i go all the way back out you then essentially there set the suspension control to the, the setup that you've just customized in that other screen so it's all very very straightforward the Aprilia Tuono V4 factory in ultra gold Olin's forks Olin's rear shock and this is the EC2 semi-active yeah look at it what a thing what a thing look at the frame absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous so anyway thank you very very much for watching i hope that was enjoyable um, big thumbs up for me obviously if you've never ridden one give one a go you're not gonna be disappointed what a machine it is to ride and uh, yeah i'll see you in the next one thanks very much